So guys, a couple things. I do want to apologize for my tarp acting a little weird. It is spring now, so what that means for us, especially here in Alaska, is a lot of crazy high speed winds. And so I'm trying to set up the tarp to prevent the wind from getting into the camera, but that also means that this tarp is going to act weird. And so you guys are just gonna have to take that. So on this is going to be part three, as the title said, of Mora, the Mora Garberg versus the world. And today we have some pretty exciting competition Competition, and that is the Mora Garberg, of course, versus the Mora Companion. And this knife, at first I really didn't think it was actually going to work, because I thought the Mora Companion would be quite smaller than the Mora Garberg. But it, as I actually pulled both of them out in a side-by-side -side comparison, they're actually very similar in size, especially if you factor, or if you don't factor this little uh, piece of metal on the bottom of this uh, Mora Garberg. They're actually extremely close in size. Now, of course, I hope you guys can see with these big mittens, I'm gonna take them off real quick. Uh, but, of course, the Mora Garberg is significantly thicker in uh, just overall thickness, and it is a lot heavier knife than the Mora Companion. The Mora Companion is a lot thinner and a lot lighter, but in overall size-wise, they're actually very close. Now, of course, I also want to note that I try and compare knives in their most stock condition because I've made no mods to this Mora Garberg. I have made actually a few mods to this Companion, but I've only coated the blade in a patina or a forced patina, and I gave it a lanyard hole. So there's only two mods I've done to it. And so that, I just want to get that out of the way so that you know how that will be affecting today's test as well. So jumping right into it, let's get started with batoning. And for, as always, we always have the competitor start. So we're going to do some batoning. Uh, once I get that out of the way. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of batoning on this piece of pine. Once again, it's nothing amazingly thick. And I'm gonna have this piece do a slightly smaller chunk. So we have it started here, and as always, I don't think, because of the camera angle, I don't think I'll be able to show the top of this. Maybe I will, actually. You can see that the Mora Companion is doing an okay job. This is not the best baton. I'm improvising here, of course, but it's doing an okay job. Dang it. <laughs> so you guys can see there, it's doing a pretty okay job. I am able to just split it at this point. Maybe not. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> Took a little bit more force, but that is pretty telling overall for the Mora Companion. I'm not actually that surprised that the Mora Companion does so poorly when it comes to the tawning, because as you can see, the Mora Companion is a pretty thin blade, or as I'll show here, the Mora Companion's a pretty thin blade, so it's not actually going to be super good for batoning. Okay, and as always, next up is the Mora Garberg. Now the Mora Garberg, because I am highly more confident in its uh, baton ability, I'm actually going to baton it through a slightly thicker piece. Of course, this is, you know, real world wood, so it's not all, you know, super scientific. Um, So you guys probably won't be able to see it too well, but the Mora is, or the Garberg, is really splitting this thing up. So. So actually this Mora is not doing as good a job as I thought it would, but uh, admittedly one thing about this note is that this is a little bit of a knotted up piece of wood, so it is definitely harder, actually probably the harder of all the woods I've actually tested so far on Mora versus the world, but pretty representative 
of that test. The Garberg, of course, went through that thicker and even more hard piece of wood um, pretty easily. I mean, I did not have the best baton, and having a good baton is really a lot when batoning, but as you can see, even an improvised baton works really well. So as of course, as expected, and really as you might think, the Mora or Garber did a far better job at batoning. So now let's get into feather sticking. So once again, starting with the companion, we're going to get into a uh, little bit of feather sticking. Now of course, I also try and do true feather sticking, so that means that I'll be batoning, or not batoning, but feather sticking on one of these flats. As you guys can see there, it does a pretty good job. Admittedly, it's probably more of the lack of my skill, and it is pretty cold out here, uh, so it is a little bit tricky to get really, really fine feather sticks in that particular type of feather sticking manner. Of course, if you were to do a more modern feather stick, this is what it would look like. So you can certainly see that that looks more fine, but actually these tend to catch sparks a little bit better. So, and they're also harder to make. As you guys can see, these are significantly harder to make and they take a significantly higher amount of control to accomplish. So that's why I prefer to do those in case anyone wonders why I like these more. Now on to the Garber. Now I do think the uh, Companion is going to be a little bit easier or was a little bit easier than the Garberg because with the Garberg and when you think about Scandinavian grinds, you have to understand that the larger the Scandinavian grind or the thicker the Scandinavian grind, the harder it is going to be doing everything else. Give this one final try just to see if this thing will actually feather stick. So you guys can see here that uh, it's certainly a lot more challenging, but finally got a good feather stick. Had to baton this piece of wood down a little bit so that I got the correct width. And that's because uh, this blade is so thick, or this uh, grind is so thick, that it just would not traditionally feather stick any other way. So you guys can see there though, nice curls, all of them very, very curly. And so only one feather stick for the Garberg because literally that was a pretty challenging feather stick, I'm not gonna lie. Now on to fire lighting. So as always with fire lighting, I always do it with a ferro rod and test the spine slash any sharp part of the knife just to see, you know, will it feather stick. 
that guy's the uh, like I said there's a lot of wind and the tripod or the uh, tarp was actually coming back at me it was like getting on this so anyways as always we'll be using the Aspen this is Aspen inner bark shredded and this is going to be what's going to be used to catch the spark because you can catch sparks with properly done feather sticks but to save some time for the testing we're just going to be using Aspen inner bark so of course the first one up is the Mora Companion and once again the spine on this has not been modified at all so this will pretty much just be for comical effect so of course absolutely nothing comes out of there it's just for comical effect now you can in fairness to the companion you can spend the time take the time and actually <clears throat> take a file to the back of this and make it 90 degrees but once again since i haven't done anything to the mora garberg i didn't want to do anything to the mora companion i want to leave it as stock as i possibly could of course except for the uh, slight modifications but overall you know the spine is completely stock on this so of course it does not start any sparks absolutely nothing so it kind of fails that test so to speak so now on to the mora garber see how well the mora garber does for fire starting now most of you guys who have been around this series will know this is pretty much going to be one try maybe two tries maybe three tries but you understand where i'm going with, or where i'm going with it it is lit right now it's a little bit hard for you guys to see but the aspen inner bark caught hopefully you guys can see that now uh, so three tries there but as always the mora garberg this was one of its primary designs was to be uh, for fire starting and out of the box to have a sharpened spine for fire starting specifically because this was a large request that a lot of people who used the companion said we would really love and appreciate a sharpened spine so that's exactly what they gave you so that is a very nice feature and once again that's you know right off the shelf or you know as it comes in the box it can do this guys now on to carving now carving is going to be once again around four basic wood notches and that's going to be seeing how effective they are and then i'm going to come back and tell you guys my thoughts on both of these knives and why i like which one for which reason and which one i ultimately think is the best Canyons, uh, whole notches, four little notches, and kind of scoring off this end. I did kind of mess up right there because this blade is very thin, so it goes through wood very easy. And ultimately, I find it very precise. But I'll get more into that uh, discussion after I've finished here with the Mora Garberg. So now to the Mora Garberg. I'm just going to do the other side of this wood or of this uh, like stick here, just so I can keep it pretty fair.
wrapping it up here, there is the Mora Garbergs. You can see it's a little less precise than the Mora Companions. And overall, I think that models pretty well on the Garberg. And overall, my use on these two, you know, uh, I will say there's a lot of very, uh, there's a lot of similarities to them. Both of them being made by Mora and both of them utilizing the Scandinavian grind. They have a lot of similarities to them, but there are some big differentials. And in part, there are some things that the Companion does better than the Garberg and vice versa. I will say that ultimately deciding between one of these two will be not only a value thing, because this knife you can get for, the Companion you can get for less than ten dollars this knife is sixty five dollars so not only is it a value thing but also it goes back to what are you going to be using your knife for if you intend to be going out into the woods and doing a lot more carving and fine intricate work i think the companion this knife will serve you far better because of its thinner blade and overall thinner and just smaller size it makes it a lot more capable of doing more fine intricate work whereas the Garberg being a lot thicker and more robust it is uh, not as keen when it comes to doing very fine tasks however something I will know about the Garberg and why I really still think the Garberg is still better than the companion is two primary reasons one the thickness and overall durability of the Garberg is superior just hands down there's no debating it uh, because it's full tang, because it's thicker, because of everything that it really is, its durability is far better. Not to mention something else that I really like about the Garberg, and the thing that is slightly better with the Garberg when using it for more advanced bushcrafting tasks is, and I've noticed this with the Cons Bull uh, and the Mora Eldris, is that this, especially the front part of the knife, is completely interchangeable. This is completely ambidextrous. And so what this means is that you're holding the knife it feels the same this way it feels the same this way it feels the same this way and it feels the same this way there's no change in ergonomics and so that's really nice so that when you're doing things like chest lever chest lever can be a real big problem with some knives hope you guys can see that nope but when you're doing a chest lever i'm not actually at my chest this time but when you're doing a chest lever on some knives it can be a serious problem because if the choil is too large uh, you know, it can actually dig into the back kind of webbing of your thumb area right here. So what I like about this knife being that it's so ambidextrous up front, it feels the same way this way and it feels the same way this way. So when you're doing things like chest lever or if you're just simply doing, you know, just knife tasks like this, it feels the exact same and that is a very nice feature for it. Uh, and so overall the ergonomic improvement of the Garberg is something that I think is a lot better and something that may have been overlooked a lot by people who are thinking about these knives, you know, comparing these two knives. And so I really do like that. In addition, another nice thing is that it comes with a far better sheath, regardless to if you get this nice leather sheath or if you get the multi-mount, it's a superior sheath than the Mora's. In addition to that as well, it also comes with a flat spine and a lanyard hole. These are things that, you, all three of those things you can add to the Mora Companion but all of those things either cost money or they cost time. And when you begin to add up all the money and time that you put into a Mora Companion, you may be left with about the same price as a Garberg because a Garberg is anywhere from 50 to $65. So you do have to be very careful uh, when thinking about which one you really want because if you're planning on trying to make this your ultimate survival mora you may very well end up at the same price tag as a garberg and you would have been probably better off with the garberg so anyways guys those are my thoughts on the garberg versus the companion both mora and this has been the third part in mora versus the world anyways guys don't forget to comment like share subscribe share what your thoughts are which one do you think is the winner ultimately um i'd love to see what you guys think about it anyways that's it for now and i'm out